Hello tubers! Today I'm going to be showing you a sprayer that I built some time back and I'll go over the highlights of it in case you'd like to use some of these ideas on the one you already have or perhaps even build one from scratch for yourself. let's get started here. Originally through the years I worked my way up through multiple sprayers to the one that I have now. The tank was left over from one of my previous builds and I made up these frame rails and now it's used as a fuel caddy. And as the trees grew larger a bigger pump wasn't a bad idea either. Now the only thing that I reused off that trailer unit was these tubes here and actually this piece here that's pretty much so it but also it didn't fit because the tank diameter is larger so I had to actually cut this apart too and then re-weld it and re-bend the straps. But the rest of this I just used channel iron instead of welding everything together I like bolting some areas so then if you ever want to service it or if you change your mind you can and then here I just have some channel iron and you get up here and this is just a tubing frame that I made for to hang everything on here. And of course the piece that holds to the tractor with the one pin attachment, that's all just solid welded and of course that's some thicker wall tubing here. I do have a video posted on how to make that one pin attachment bracket in case some of you might be interested. To mount the pump, I cut up an I-beam plasma cutter and then it just bolts to your main framework. Up here I have a bracket that swivels which retains the hose and then it also clips onto a hanger and the biscuits on the gun they're going to keep it from rattling when it's in the holder here which is a chunk of exhaust tubing and then it's really easy to grab when you're on the machine. Okay, give you a little show here how this is all plumbed. When you come out of the bottom of the tank, you got a shut off valve here. In case you ever had to service something on a unit, you don't have to worry about having to drain the tank. Uh, then you got a filter right here for the system and your suction line, and that comes in over there. Now, then the pressure comes out right here and comes up to your valve body. Now this thing here is a dampener and what this is for is when you have the big piston pump running it's kind of pulsing pretty hard on the whole system. So what this is, there's a rubber diaphragm inside here and you put an air charge in it according to whatever you're going to be spraying for pressure on the system and that dampens it out so it's more of a smooth flow instead of a pulsing flow coming out of your gun. Now, here's a look at the control valves from the front. Now you had the fluid coming in at high pressure and volume on this side over here. Now you cannot deadhead that pump at all. You gotta have the fluid, when you're not using the gun or the agitator, you gotta have the fluid escape somehow. So the regulator here is what adjusts, and what you don't need, it blows it off, and where that goes is over to the side of the tank there, and that would be used for agitation then on that side. Uh, the mix right here, this is actually another agitator. Now when you flip this up, it actually blows all the fluid off this rail and into the agitator on this side of the tank, which actually takes the stress off. I use that when I'm running around the yard and not spraying. Then I'll actually open this up, or if you want to mix up a batch of something with the agitator real quick, that works great for that too. here with this wing nut it's a real light bleed onto this valve here what that's for is when you shut the pump off you're still going to retain all your pressure in this whole system it's kind of a safety thing have this lightly on all the time then when you shut the pump off the pressure comes off of leads off of everything and then if you're working on the gun or the lines or whatever you don't have to worry about having an accident
Now for a little bit more about this pump, it's a model D115 Hypro. It's a three cylinder pump. Puts out 30 gallons a minute at 290 PSI. Now you're probably wondering why in the heck would you need a pump that big on here when the thing's only got a 55 gallon tank? Well the reason being when you're spraying, I hate that when you gotta run an engine wide open to use something. So that way you can be just off of idle and everything works just fine. The other big benefit is when you're doing the flush, you're cleaning the tank out when you're all done, and then I have a nozzle for that right here. You can position higher, lower, whatever, and use it for other things too. But that way you can wind the motor up a little more. It don't take long to empty the tank to clean the unit out. What I have here is a tip for you. When I did the dirt here, I got four inch pipe running everywhere throughout the yard. That way if you want to run some hoses or wires through, you change your mind or you have a failure. You can easily service it without having to dig your yard up. Now where I'm going with this is actually I have two three quarter inch PEX lines that come up to this main ball valve right here to fill a tank. And do the whole yard, I don't know, I got around 160 trees. To do both sides of the trees and everything, usually go through around six to eight tanks and it don't take real long to fill that. This here is my smallest gun. And I have a quick coupler on it. Keeps the hose from binding and wrapping up the sides, making it easy to change the guns. At the other end here, they normally have these type ends on them for spray. And what I did is out of an electrical thing for a lamp, I made up this fitting and then I put the eighth inch pipe thread in it and I have a fan pattern on the end though. And then you can even turn this for how you're holding a gun to spray under the trees and around the buildings much easier. I'll give you a demo here. This gun here is the one I use the majority of the time for spraying the pines. Uh, it's got a pretty good sized tip in it, so it don't take all day to get it done. You got a little bit smaller ones too you can purchase. I got some rubber biscuits on it, so when it's in the holder, here, it don't rattle. And of course, once again, we have our quick coupler. Snap it on, you're ready to go. Now, this gun here is my biggest one. The nice thing about it is where you can adjust the pattern. You go from a mist to a straight stream by moving this handle here. And in regards to tips, they have a pretty good sized tip inside this one right now. I use this mostly for spraying leaf trees. Now I do have a larger tip and when I have that one in, I, believe it or not, I use this thing for washing the house. It, uh, about three tanks and you're all done in the house. It works real good for taking the cobwebs and stuff off. Well anyway, enough of the yabble, let's get the, giving you a demo here.
problem I have here is the spray bowl. So I'll install this, but first I wanted to show you a little tip here. I always put caps on everything, otherwise bugs seem to like to find a home inside them tubes. Hey, you get your spray nozzles. Life is not good then. It sounds like we got a train coming again. A lot of trains were coming through when I was trying to film this today. Sure enough, it takes a little fun out of it. Anyway, put the holes on here and should be ready to rock on this. Okay, last but not least, least, <laughs> I'd like to show you what the flush, how that works on this unit. And then here I have a piece of copper tubing flattened out on the end for a fan. And a nylon washer in there so it kind of stays taut however you put it. Now besides flushing the tank, you can raise and lower it. And for example, use it for cleaning the driveway. I definitely went through a lot of different sprayers through the years to get to this point. Hopefully these videos help you out and if you are to build something for yourself, you can get things just the way you want them the first time. Before you go away, leave a comment, rate, and perhaps subscribe. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to get you back here again. Hey tubers, I thought a couple of you might get a kick out of a screenshot of what it takes to put one of these videos together. The lower half shows the scenes, voiceover, and effects which have been added. Here's a little flashback footage of a Jeep that I did a lot of tweaks to years ago. That's not a lift kit, the suspension was all homemade, including some sway bars front and rear. The engine has been switched to a modified V6, and the paint job's all done in lacquer, which was a big thing back then. Yeah, it took me about a month to do.